All right, in this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to write a screenplay within the software Celtics. If you haven't seen the other episodes, I'd recommend going back and look at them. I talk about screenplay structure in general, and in this one, I'm covering specifically the software and how to write the and how to write a screenplay inside the actual software. If you're looking for the free Celtics uh, desktop software for Mac or PC, you can find it at uh, this is one of the websites I found that has a free download. It is screenplayreaders.com slash Celtics right there. And there, if you scroll down to the very bottom of the page, you'll find a download link for Mac and PC, and it is free. So let's get into screenwriting here. I've got Celtics installed on my, on my PC here. I'm going to open it up, and it brings open this splash screen. And it brings open several templates that you can start. We're just going over film right now, so we're going to start filming. Uh, you can hit open from Celtics if you have a previous project. Right now, I'm just going to start a new one. I'm going to hit film. Software opens up, and we have a few different things here. Let's take a look at over the little project library here. Every project file that you save in Celtics can have several different screenplays, and the same thing, say you're writing a series or a bunch of short films, like a web series or something like that. Uh, you can go up to File, Save Project As. I'm going to save this to my desktop for right now. I'm just going to call this Web Series. Save, save it to my desktop. And now let's say we're going to have more than one screenplay. Say we're going to have episode one, episode two, episode three. So within Celtics, this is kind of cool. You can actually go up here. Right now I've got one screenplay. Let's right click on this one. I'm going to rename this screenplay to episode one. And I can even put a name on it. The run. I don't know what to call it. Anyway, so that, that's the first episode for my web series. I hit OK. And now this screenplay here has been changed to episode one, the run. And now I'm going to go up and hit plus and add something else. I'm going to add a new screenplay. There's several options in here. I'm going to add a new screenplay. And this one I'm going to call episode two, The Walk. Such creativity here. So I'm going to hit OK. And notice it's made another screenplay. So I've got two screenplays. Let's do this one more time. Episode three, The Stand Still. And hit OK. And we've got three screenplays. Notice we've got these tabs up here. We've got episode one, episode two, episode three. So I'm just showing that you can make several different screenplays within one project file. If I hit uh, Control S and save my progress here, close my screenplay, uh, close out the software, here is my Celtics project file right there. Now if I double click on this, it opens it up and everything's been restored. So this is pretty much like a Word document. I mean, you can just save it, close it, open it back up. So now we've got episode one. Okay, I'm going to close episode three, I'm going to close episode two, and I'm going to start working on episode one is what I've got open right now. Uh, within Celtics, by the way, all these tabs down here belong to this one script right there. So you have typeset PDF. This is where you print your script out. We'll show this in a little bit here. You've got scratch pad for notes. You've got index cards if you're doing the index card sort of method of writing. You've got a title page here. So I'm going to actually go to my title page and start off with my title page. You bring up title page, it brings up this little title by the author. I'm going to call this put my name based on if it's based on a book or something like that based on work copyright Ooh, i'm going to copyright my thing to 2016 contact information channing low let me put my address on there 666 satan lane don't come visit me please uh hell um 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 um, um where, where is hell um idaho just kidding, I love, I love Idaho. Uh, 8465126566. There we go. So that's where I live in Hell, Idaho. But Idaho's great, so sorry, Idaho people. Yeah, they got, got a lot of cool locations. Okay, I'm going to stop making excuses here. Uh, there we go. So I've got my title page. I'm going to go to script. And start writing my and start writing my movie here. Okay, we're going to start out with now. Notice we've got this little pull down menu right here. It starts out on a scene heading. Whatever you pull, if you pull this down and select something else, it turns into action. If you click scene heading, it turns into a scene heading. So now I've got like action on the top that messes things up because you always start with a scene heading here. So first of all, I'm going to write. Let's go interior, high school. Now if we're putting something like a high school and we want to be in a if we're putting something like a high school and we want to put it in a very specific location in the high school, say like a chemistry lab, I'm going to put one hyphen, hyphen there. Oop, high school is two words. And I'm going to say hyphen chemistry lab, another hyphen day. You can put just one specific location like this and then just do hyphen day. Or you can put like if you can put like a high school chemistry lab day if you want to get very specific that this is in high school and it's in the chemistry lab of the high school. All you have to remember in Celtics are the commands return, 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 tab, and tab, tab. And in some instances, I think tab, tab, tab. Anyway, let's go through this and see what it does. So we hit return, and notice all of a sudden it turns to an action prompt. When we start writing action, first of all, we're going to describe 
the setting. So I'm going to start off by describing the setting here. I'm going to say the lab is a large room with several old computers. The lights are dim and several bored high school students stare at an image projected on the screen in the middle of the room. So now we're starting to describe what's taking place in the room. We described that it's a large room with several old computers and that there are several high school students that are just sitting there staring at a screen. So now, uh, one suggestion with writing action is just to break it up and to kind of make it make it a little easier to, a couple things, to make it easier to read, to kind of stick to the minute per page rule, the minute per page rule, you gotta break up your paragraphs. Uh, let me zoom this up a little bit. So what we're going to do here is we're pretty much going to use one to two sentences per par paragraph tops. And maybe in some instances, uh, three sentences per paragraph. But you want to keep them fairly short. This kind of puts it in shootable paragraphs. So it's easy to read. It's easy to shoot. You kind of look through it and see what needs to be done piece by piece. If you have one big bulky paragraph, it's going to be really difficult to read. So right now I'm going to hit enter or return and it automatically goes to another action prompt. It has a space, single space between those, and I can start writing the next thing. These paragraphs are kind of like thoughts, little thoughts that are uh, divides up the scene. So let's introduce a character here. We'll say Ted, and I'm gonna put in parentheses, Ted's age, 40. Stands at the... So Ted stands at the front of the room, staring at all the students. Now we're going to put a quick description on Ted. We're not going to put a big description on the character, on the high school students because there's a lot of high school students that can be kind of figured out later in pre-production and production. Right now, Ted is a main character. We've introduced Ted by name. So we are going to put a basic description on Ted. I've introduced Ted. So once again, I've described the room, described who's in the room. And now we're specifically looking at Ted. And now we're going to describe Ted. You want to physically describe this person that's important to the story. So now we're saying Ted wears an old dirty t-shirt and ripped up Levi's. He also sports a mohawk and a tear tattoo below his left eye. I'm going to put a high frame right there, tear tattoo below his left eye. So now we're starting to describe who this person is and what they kind of look like. Remember, films are very visual, so we are describing this person and what the person looks like since it's a main character. So now that we've introduced the setting, we've introduced the character, the main character, uh, now we can start really describing the action. Notice these are two short paragraphs. I'm going to hit return, and we got two sentences in there. Return goes to a new paragraph. I'm going to start typing the description. And notice we don't have it in all caps because we've already introduced Ted in all caps, and now he, we're just going with regular uh, with a regular proper noun here. So Ted points. So now we're going into action here, and we're doing it all in present tense. Ted points at the projected image on the screen. The image portrays a large group of people protesting in the streets of a large city. So now we've done a little bit of action. We're describing what Ted is doing. We can hit return. Let's say we want to go to dialogue here. Ted starts speaking right here. So I'll hit return from this paragraph. It goes down to a new paragraph. But now if I want to do Ted speaking, all you have to do is hit tab. Tab jumps over to look up here, character. This here, this cursor is now typing character. I'm going to type in Ted hit return, and automatically it goes to the dialogue prompt. So Ted can actually speak. So now I can say what, what Ted is going to say here. We're going to write what Ted says. So Ted kind of yells here, look at this, people are pissed. So uh, now let's say we want to have some student raise his or her hand and speak here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit return. We're not going to put that student's name yet because we haven't we have yet to introduce that person. So let's quickly introduce the person that's going to speak. I hit return and notice it goes to the character prompt, assuming that it's going that somebody else is going to speak. But I don't want it at character. I want it at a new paragraph. So I'm going to hit return again and it jumps back to our action prompt. So now I can describe that person that speaks. One girl in the group, Katie, we can even put an age here. We can, she's a high school student, so maybe 16, raises her hand and quickly responds. If we can, we can put a quick description if it's kind of important to the character right here, a quick physical description, or we can just kind of move on if it's just kind of a generic high school student. So you might want to put a little description there, but after you're done with that, you're going to hit return and now tab to go to the dial, go to the character prompt. We'll type in Katie, we'll hit return, and now we can actually type in what she's saying. 
So she says, is this photo for real? So now we're gonna hit return and it goes to a dialogue prompt. We can type in Ted now. And actually, as you start typing it, if you've already typed in Ted, when you type a T, it'll bring up the name and you can actually just hit enter. So when you type in T, it's going to bring up Ted's name there. So it's a quick shortcut. We've already used his name. So now his name's been added to the catalog. All you have to do is hit return because it's highlighted and Ted's name is there. Now I'm going to do a parenthesis here. I'm going, to, I'm going to do parenthetical. We're going to hit return, but I want parentheticals right below his name. So all you have to do from here is hit tab. It jumps to parentheticals. Type in what he looks like here. It's looks like shocked face. So now we don't have to put that in description because we put this together with the dialogue. Just two words there, shocked face. So he says with a shocked face, what, what the hell do you mean? Is it real? So we hit return and it jumps back to the character prompt and now she can respond. Hit K, it brings up Katie, hit enter, uh, hit return again and it jumps down to the dialogue prom prompt. You know what I mean. Okay. So right there, let's say we're going to end this scene. We want Ted, we want to transition to a new scene. Let's show you how to do that. So I'm going to hit return and we'll say Ted suddenly... So Ted suddenly screams loudly and waves his arms in the air. He turns and speeds out of the room. The students sit and stare at the doorway as if they have seen this all before. So that's the end of the scene there. Let's go out into the hallway. So what we do is when we do a new scene heading, that means we change locations. Even if it's as simple as going from a the classroom out into the hallway, that is a scene change. If, even if somebody walks from, if we have one scene where, where we see somebody walk out of the classroom, walk into the hallway, then walk into the bathroom, that is actually three different scenes. You have interior classroom, interior hallway, and interior bathroom. And even if it's a simple like movement when you just have three shots of somebody walking from the room to the hallway, to the bathroom it still is three different scenes so now if we want to go to a different location here we can hit return and now we want say we want to start a new scene notice this is on action up here if i hit return again it starts a new scene heading so return return starts a new scene heading so now i can write interior high school right there we got the high school chemistry lab i'm just going to arrow down and select that to shorten this up and go back and change this to hallway and what some screenwriters will do here is eliminate day. This kind of impl implies that this is one continuation from this scene to the next. If you put day, it kind of implies that this is a brand new scene with a, um, with an advance in time. That uh, this is a, a get, it's uh, missing a gap of time that it's like moves to and maybe another day or something like that. So I'm going to do interior hallway, and I'm not going to put day because it implies that this is the same day. You hit return, and then you can continue establishing the hallway, describing the hallway. And if we've already described Ted, and if it's just a continuation of the previous scene, we don't need to describe him again. And uh, if it goes into a new scene and he's dr dressed differently, then we will need to describe his new clothing, but quickly. This is all about being kind of quick and efficient, but those are the basics there of, uh, those are the basics of, of screenwriting there with the four elements that we described. Okay, let's describe uh, extensions right now. So let's say up here that somebody outside in the hallway uh, screams and we don't see them on screen, but we hear a voice uh, screaming. I'm gonna hit return, return again. I'm gonna say a voice interrupts Katie. I'm gonna hit enter, tab over, and we're gonna say if we've introduced a character before, uh, we, we can use that person's name uh, or we can just use a simple a simple explanation like if, if it's vague and we don't want that person revealed yet, we can say, man's voice. And I'm going to add the extension right here. I'm going to hit parentheses. I'm going to hit a parenthesis and I'm going to say O dot S dot. And that means off screen. That means it's probably like out in the hallway or something like that. I'm just say, I don't know, some random. So somebody out in the hallway yells, where is Ted? I mean, we can, now we can put like description in. Uh, the students look, turn their heads toward the toward the doorway or something like that. But that is an extension right there. Now, if you're doing phone conversations and you see, you hear somebody over the phone, but you don't see them, this would be as simple as just saying, let's turn this into a character's name here. We'll say John, something simple there. We're going to go to these parentheses and add V O. Uh, that's if it's narration or if it is uh, a phone conversation, you don't see them. That is, uh, and some uh, screenwriters debate whether or not to use VO or off screen there. Some use off screen for phone calls. I see it more commonly used as VO for phone calls. Transitions. Once again, uh, transitions are used mainly for shooting scripts when the directors get preparing. To get to a transition, you can hit return, go up to this little drop down menu, and hit transition. And it will drop this cursor all the way over here.
Uh, and now you can type, so transitions belong on the right hand side of the screen over here. And now I can say to say, dissolve to interior high school hallway. So now we're gonna dissolve to that, or you can put cut to, uh, you can put basically anything that you want to there. Fade in, fade out, and that's a transition. Last thing that I want to cover is a montage. Montages are usually done by simply doing this. You just go to a new scene heading and write montage. This is something like uh, you'll see like a couple that they finally get together and then they start enjoying each other and it goes from one shot of them sitting out having a picnic, one shot of them having a glass of wine in a restaurant, one shot of them holding hands and, and walking through the park and it just goes through a little montage with maybe some music playing and then you just basically describe the montage. So each paragraph will represent a new scene. You don't have to do a scene heading for each new shot that it cuts to. So you're just basically going to say Ted and Joanna sit on a picnic blanket in the park and laugh loudly. Hit enter and now we go to a new, so then it cuts to a new shot. Ted and Joanna sit in a restaurant and sip wine. The waiter delivers their lobster dinner. They smile at each other lovingly. So it's just going from shot to shot. Let's do one more. Ted and Joanna sit on a porch swing of a beautiful home. They kiss. So there we go. There's three different shots. This is a montage right there. And then as you go ex exit a montage, then you just go back to another scene heading. Return, return, goes to a new scene heading. And that's an example of a montage. So, all right, well, thank you for watching. This is just kind of basic screenplay structure. What I really recommend you guys do is uh, if you're interested in really writing and becoming a professional at it, what you need to do is you start reading a bunch of screenwriting books and also read a lot of screenplays. One website that I recommend is simplyscripts.com. Simplyscripts.com has a whole bunch of professional screenplays of movies that have been shot, a lot of Hollywood films. If you go up to the top and go to movie scripts, it will load and you can look through. They usually have a featured screenplay up here or you can go down and search it by or you can go down and search scripts by letters they have a ton of screenplays a ton of professional screenplays that you can read through let's click on this one here and take a look at it After clicking on that link we're going to download and read the script and now you can scroll through it and look at this looks like a shooting script here because it has the scene numbers on the side and it has uh continued here as well so as we move down you can see your scene heading with the hyphens on it you can see your action or description you see the character name parentheticals, dialogue, you see the whole thing here. Uh, and you can read through it. And what I really recommend doing is reading through th through a couple like feature length scripts or, or more and see how the professionals have done it. You're going to learn a lot more by reading the pro these professional screenplays than by just going at it yourself. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please post them and I will see you in future episodes. Thank you. If you're interested in seeing the rest of my screenwriting uh, modules that I'm doing right now, you can visit youtube.com slash chinfat, and that'll take you to my page here. On my page, if you go under playlists, you'll find the screenwriting playlist, and you can click on that and look at the rest. Right now it says no videos because this is before I'm uploading, so yes, just go to the screenwriting playlist, and you'll find uh, all the modules that I keep putting on screenwriting there, and you can watch them all. So watch them all, subscribe, and... Um, and other stuff. Thanks.